Hi, I created an Apex Predator in Pal World. This is God? And it's an absolute nightmare to the other pals of the region. You know, there's a really funny and interesting thing about science and discovery. Humans, we always ask if we can do this thing. We never really ask if we should do this thing. Now you may be asking yourself, why did I spend hours making this? Well, dear viewer, a single comment on one of my shorts. This comment read, tutorial idea, how to breed legendary on Chicopee. One, Glitch catch a tower boss. Two, breed it with a legendary lamb ball. Doppel helixes, this video is for you and thank you for the idea. Now, I will say, the method that I used to get legendary on my very own Chicopee is no longer valid. As of writing and producing this video, the glitch to catch tower bosses has officially been patched accidentally. Now this is only my pure speculation, but I think it's actually incredibly cool that this really never meant to be fixed. I, I think the devs saw that the players were enjoying being able to catch the tower bosses, and they were just going to leave it in. I just think that's really neat of them. Anyway, let's get into the video on how I made the Apex Predator known as God. Okay, so first things first, I will not and cannot take any credit for how this, I guess you could call it an exploit was discovered. Um, I just did some research and I found this Reddit post in the Pow World subreddit. It was posted by a user known as uh, throw underscore away underscore 19. Throw away 19, if you see this, thank you for discovering this. If you are the person that discovered said exploit. The exploit for capturing tower bosses was relatively simple. To give you the cliff notes, it went as follows. Aggro and NPC. For this video, I aggroed the PIDF officers that you're able to find in most of the settlements. You then want to teleport to any of the towers. Now when you get to the tower, you want to make sure that those officers are still following you. Usually what I did was I would shoot them so they would re-aggro onto me and then it would take my assault charge up to 2x rather than 1. Once you're inside the arena, what you want to do is kite the boss around to the point that it is in between you and the PIDF officers. Your goal is to make sure that the officers will actually hit the boss. Now, once the boss is hit, it's going to go to a corner within the tower itself. This is how you know that the boss is ready to be caught. Now, please keep in mind, once the boss is in this state, we are not able to do any sort of damage to it. If we do, we will have to restart this whole exploit. Once the boss is in the corner, you can throw a pal sphere at its back to catch it. After that, you're going to return to title and then rejoin the game. Now, we've caught all of the tower bosses. We can now officially move on to phase two. Breeding. So much breeding. I will be the first to say that I am not the best Power World player out there, so I of course messed this up. I read the directions once, and I thought, naively, that I completely understood everything. So yeah, that's the story on how I had a poor chickpea breed with multiple different tower bosses more times than I care to admit. I am oh so sorry, here is a nice patch of grass that you can graze in, please forgive me, god I am so sorry. This is where we need to talk about something called breeding power. You see, every pal has a set number that will determine what will be bred when two pals are mating. You may be asking, how do these numbers work, how does the game decide what's going to be bred, Honestly, man, I, I don't know. All I know is that if we were to breed any pal with one of the tower bosses, we're always going to get a chickpea. 
Now, that is where the magic's gonna happen, though. We can get a legendary passive on a Chicopee this way. I used my Paladias to breed with Grizzbull. Now, it has the passive skills Legend, Celestial Emperor, and Unstable. And although Unstable is a negative passive, that's not gonna be a problem, as this is just the first breeding combo I'm doing. This did not take nearly as long as I was expecting. I think I maybe hatched a total of three or four eggs, and we got our first Chicopee that had Legend and Celestial Emperor. This was a great start for me. Sure, I got a negative passive, but I had two out of the four passives that I thought would be a great fit for my little Apex Predator. At the time, I didn't really know what I wanted my other two passives to be. I realized that I was going to need a total of 116 Chicopee anyway for condensing, so I just decided to catch all of the Chicopees. As of now, there are no more Chicopees. I've captured them all. I officially have a monopoly on the Chicopees. I apologize, I never thought this is how I would make my fame and fortune, but I, I guess I'm a, uh, I, I'm, I'm a Chicopee tycoon. Um, yeah. While you see me catching a metric crap ton of Chicopee, you may be curious as to why there are far more pals that are spawning than normal, and why you saw me fighting three beacons at once rather than one earlier in this video. That's because I have my save set to the maximum rate on the pal spawn rate. I do this for a couple reasons. You know, one, this is my main save, where I do quite a lot of experiments, and I produce a lot of videos here, and... Two, after doing my previous challenge run, like the permadeath run, which you can watch it here, please watch it here, I kind of got bored with the difficulty level. Having to fight three bosses at once rather than one itches my brain in a way that I wasn't expecting. Um, I just, I, I don't know what to tell you. Now, it's always fun doing these videos because I will usually always run into something that I have not seen or caught yet. And this video is just like that. Uh, I found a Lucky Cativa. Now, I didn't have my mic on, so you're not going to hear my legitimate reaction, unfortunately. But I will say, I'm going to give you an idea of what my reaction was like, okay? It went something like this. Audible gasp. So yeah, that's neat to have. I've caught more than enough Chicopee now, and I think I've found the final two passives I want to add them being Ferocious and Musclehead. If you're unfamiliar, Ferocious is a passive skill that will give your pal a 20% attack buff, and Musclehead gives a 30% attack buff and a 50% work speed debuff. This is totally going to be fine because we're not going to be having God doing any sort of labor here at the base. Uh, this Chicopee is meant for one thing, and that is death and destruction. I think these are going to be perfect passives to get even more damage output from our little Apex Predator. Now, at the time, my main concern was just getting as much damage that I possibly could squeeze out of this thing. That was a little uh, nearsighted of me and kind of naive because later on in the video that does turn into a problem, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. The easy part was finding a ferocious chickpea and a musclehead chickpea. The hard part is breeding those chickpea with the chickpea we have now that has legend, celestial emperor, and unstable. You see, I have to do a breeding line, essentially. The first passive that I went for was ferocious, and to make things even more difficult, I needed to breed a chickpea that had ferocious, legend, Celestial Emperor got rid of the unstable negative passive, and to top that all off, I needed to breed a Chicopee that was uh, also female, as my Musclehead Chicopee was male. Now, I'm sure I could have gone out and found a female Musclehead Chicopee, or I don't know, maybe bred a female Musclehead Chicopee, but I'm just the guy writing the script now. The footage you're seeing is from the Megabits of the Past. I'm just narrating his insane choices. I only had two cakes at the time, so I got my trusty Jormantide Ignis to cook me up some cakes. What is my purpose? Oh, Jormantide, that... 
That is a question. What is my purpose? Okay, you... you bake cakes. Oh my god. Jormantide Ignis may be having an existential life crisis? True. He may also be planning a rebellion and coming for my head, but between you and me, I don't think anyone else on the base is feeling the same way. He's really the only one that makes cakes. I don't know, maybe if he were just to take a step back and understand the value of a hard day's work, it might be okay. Maybe. Probably not. But hey, we have more cake than I know what to do with now, which means we can get back to the task at hand. More breeding. Now, I don't want to bore you with all the footage I have from hatching a countless number of chickpea because I value your time. Almost as much as I value you hitting that sub button. I am so sorry for this segue, but here I am. Your support has been absolutely phenomenal, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. As of now, you may be watching and not even realize you're not subscribed right now. Out of everyone who watches, a whopping 98.9% .9 of you aren't. If you're one of those people, please smash that subscribe button. It'll help me out a ton, and it lets me know that you enjoy these videos. Also, we are so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. I mean, look at this. You can get in today on the ground floor. Okay, I apologize for my little outburst there, but after quite a lot of hatched eggs, we got a female chickpea that has Ferocious, Legend, and Celestial Emperor. This means now all I have to do is breed for Musclehead, and then I won't need to force Jormantide to bake cakes anymore. My personal chef made me around 30 cakes, and I got to breeding, and I got to hatching. And the final chickpea I needed, luckily, did not take too long. The apex predator of Pal World, the strongest pal in Pal World, the pal you wish you had, the pal I wish I maybe wouldn't have spent so much time on, the pal that still needs so many more moves and a whole lot of pal's holes that I still need to go grind for. Man, I did not prepare for this. God? And that leads me to my next step in my plan for world domination with the single apex chickpea. Skill fruits. I need all of the skills. My chickpea will not be attacking with measly attacks. I want some sky shattering, some earth shaking, some ocean splitting moves. Which meant I need to travel all over creation, grabbing as many skill fruits as I could get my grubby little hands on. I got a lot of them and I went back to my base. It's time to start condensing all of the chickpeas I own into one hive mine known as God? I got chickpea to four stars by sacrificing its brethren for the greater purpose, i.e. world domination. Afterwards, I started to enhance my chickpea. It was at this point I realized that I did not have enough large pal souls to fully max out my little death machine, and this was going to be a problem. Because when you fully enhance any of your pal's skills, you can get a total of a 30% buff. That is nothing to sneeze at. That 30% is paramount in potentially knocking out all of these towers with a single chickpea. Now, could I have potentially flew all over collecting souls from chests and things like that? Uh, yes, 100%. Totally could have. What I actually did was breed a whole bunch of Anubis and then butcher them for their souls. If you're not aware, you can do this too. It is a very easy way to farm large pal souls. Do I feel bad about this? Yes. Did I ever think I would make a statement like that? No. No, I did not. Do I have an absolutely insanely powerful chicken? Yes. Yes, we do. But at what cost, I say? I got Chickpea to level 50, and I was pretty excited, but also incredibly nervous for a couple reasons. One, I'm always terrified that these videos and challenge runs I do will fail every time at the first tower. You know, I want to make good content for you, dear viewer, and ending an adventure early like that kind of makes me a little queasy. My second concern is getting towards the end of the challenge and it turning out to be just a big waste of time due to the challenge itself being impossible or due to my own mistakes. 
So I guess I wanted to take my little death machine out for a test drive, you could say. You would think I would ease my little guy into a fight, but no. I thought it would be a wonderful, an absolutely wonderful idea for it to take on three Belazimut at once. Three. Again, I'm just the scriptwriter here. And, uh, yeah, I'm questioning past Megabits' choices, as I'm sure you are too. No, my boy! Father hell! In a word, bad. <laughs> but I mean, okay, let's like, let's put this into realistic terms. When would one singular Apex Chicopee fight three Belazimut at one time, aside from in this weird world that I've created. <laughs> I feel like I didn't give Chicopee a fair chance. So before I go to fight the tower bosses and you and I, dear viewer, have to go our separate ways, I think we should do some experiments. I'm thinking we see how strong Chicopee is by fighting bosses around the map. The first of which being the level 38 Mamorous that everyone runs into when they are a noob and they first start out a save, and it's absolutely terrifying because you think it's going to attack you. But now, Mamorous, you're the one that's going to be terrified. You're the one that's going to be attacked. Ah, oh, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, my little killing machine. Oh, who's a killing machine? You are. Yes, you are. The next boss that I wanted to take on is the level 23 King Paka. Now, I know that Chicopee is going to absolutely decimate this thing, and that is precisely why I did this. I don't know what it is, but I do not like King Paka. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Just something about it. You know, it has that, like, level of arrogance. Like, you know, it's just, it's better than you. And I'm not a fan of it. So, of course, I let Chicopee do this. I then let Chicopee fight Univolt, and there's really not much to be said about this fight. You know, I gave Chicopee all ground moves, and this was over relatively fast. And I don't know, I'm a, I'm a little scared of this little Chicopee's power. I, I don't know what I've created. Relaxosaurus Lux. Although, I think the Lux variant is better than the normal Relaxosaurus. I absolutely despise every single Relaxosaurus I have ever seen. I don't know what it is, but they are not relaxed. They have zero chill, and everything they do, it's just not very cash money of them, you know? Uh, this fight was also very, very fast. Um, at one point, Chicopee was kind of stuck in the back wall of the arena, and when it was using Sand Tornado, it wasn't actually hitting the Relaxosaurus, so I did have to move Chicopee, but aside from that, Chicopee absolutely decimated it, and I feel like we are starting to satiate the bloodlust of Chicopee, so hopefully we can do the tower bosses very soon, and then this video will be over. With all of the previous bosses that I've already had Chicopee fight, I felt like they were all relatively easy and lower level. So I kind of wanted to turn up the difficulty a little bit on Chicopee and see how it fared. Uh, thus, we fought Jormantide. This fight definitely took longer than the previous fights, but honestly, Chicopee held its own. Um, the, the main issue was uh, Chicopee was using really high power moves, which means it's not attacking very often. And then in turn, it means I'm getting attacked a lot more than I wish I was being attacked. But regardless, this fight went off without a hitch. Chicopee is a monster. I, I, I don't know what else to say. This, it's, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> You just took on a Yormantide by yourself. Wow. Oh, amazing. Amazing.
Come here, you little butthead. Ugh. Some. The last boss that I wanted Chicopee to try out was gonna be Anubis. Now, I chose this for multiple reasons. One, I think Anubis is one of the hardest bosses to fight, and granted, don't get me wrong, I know I could go fight Jet Ragon or Paladius or Necromus, um, but those are legends, you know? And I mean, I guess I could have fought Frost Stallion too, but again, legend. Uh, Chicopee, although it does have the legend trait, it does not have the defense of a legend, and I think, I, I don't know, I, I just, I, I feel like we know the outcome of that. I, I think if Chicopee had, you know, a thousand defense, I, I think Chicopee would be fine fighting legends. Uh, so we're gonna skip over that. Um, the, the fight with Anubis was a very interesting one because Chicopee put out a lot of damage. Um, so much so that I think Chicopee somehow knocked Anubis out of reality. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened here. Uh, you know, things were just stopped and I looked to try to find where Anubis was and it was just gone. <laughs> it was, it was gone. You know, I, I, I had its health bar. The game thought it was here, but it wasn't. It, it just disappeared. So I'm assuming it clipped out somewhere. It must have clipped. Dang it. What are you doing over here? Huh. Okay, well. Yeah. We continue. Uh, so we continued the battle. And although I don't think it was a, you know, proper representation on if Chicopee could win, since, you know, the battle was cut off halfway and Chicopee ended up, and Chicopee was able to heal up a little bit, I, I still think it kind of shows how strong, you know, my little Chicopee is. Regardless though, at the very end of it, Chicopee, Chicopee has fallen. Oh God. Sorry, Chickapee, you would not have survived that, dude. <laughs> oh man, this is a close battle. Oh, Chickapee, come on! Come on! I can't let you die, I'm sorry. Oh, so close. Oh, Chickapee. Don't worry, we'll, we'll It was a good it. battle. It was a long battle. Here. And it did its best. Get caught, nerd. Okay. Get caught. All right, come on, get caught. <laughs> there we go, first try. First try. <laughs> Who are you attacking? What did the dick toys do? We've done our experiments. We've made an apex predator that could wipe out the pal race as a whole if it saw fit. We've done all of our preparations. It's time for the crescendo. We're going to take on the tower bosses. That's right, it's tea day. I was nervous for this, and then, uh, the <laughs> this, that happened. Chicopee literally just hit for 10,000 for one move. After I saw the connection of that first move, I knew that Chicopee was just gonna absolutely decimate Zoe and Grizzbolt, and <sighs> Chicopee did not fail to disappoint throughout this whole fight. That was amazing, oh my god! Wow, I cannot believe that God was able to completely decimate the first tower boss! Wow, we are on a roll! Let's uh, let's go, let's, let's go fight Lily and Lane. Uh, we'll need to change up our movesets, but uh, this is looking good. This is looking good. The battle between these two behemoths was anything but boring. Chicopee was hitting for huge damage with every single attack. 
Now, this fight was still no walk in the park. I did have to pull Chicopee in and out as the battle progressed to help avoid some of Lilene's attacks. Well, watching the footage back now, I realized that I probably shouldn't have been attacking them at all, as this video was meant to showcase a godly Chicopee. Regardless of all of that, though, Chicopee's performance was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the, the main issue with this Chicopee build I'm seeing is its defense. You know, I knew this was going to be a problem after this battle, and I am pretty concerned for what's to come. You'll just have to wait and see what happens, though, dear viewer. That was amazing. Wow. God? Defeated Lily and Lilian. Wow, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Unfortunately, I think this is where... I think this is going to be uh, God's uh, limit here. I I don't know. I, I can't foresee... I can't foresee our Chicopee getting any further than it already has. And it's already gotten a lot further than I expected. Um, we'll still, we're still gonna try the last towers, but let's change up its move set. Oh my god! It just hit for six thousand. Oh my god, dude! That's insane. Axel and Orzerk. Orzerk, it's an absolute tank. Oh, no, 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 a, no. a beefcake if you will. This fight was the longest for sure. Um, Chicopee, unfortunately, wasn't really able to hold its own due to its defense. We both knew that this was going to be the bottleneck of this build I've made. I essentially created a glass cannon Chicopee here, which is still incredibly cool and amazing, and I... I, for one, did not think in a million years we'd be able to get as far as we did with just this Chicopee. Now, I chose not to take on the last two towers because I kind of believe we've seen this Chicopee's hard limit. You know, it's able to push out more than enough damage, I think, but it really is unable to take a beating, and that's going to be a problem. You know, I know I could keep pulling it in and out for each battle, but I really just wanted this video to showcase how insane any PAL is able to be if you put the right passives on it. You know, if you condense it, or if you get it up to four stars. Like, something as simple as a Chicopee can knock out three towers pretty much on its own. It's just, uh, it, it, it's incredible what you can do in this game. All right, Chicopee, you got this. Oh no, oh God. <laughs> Come on, God, you got this. <laughs> just one more hit. God, please, just one more, there we go. Oh no, you died. Oh, not God. Oh, he died. <laughs> okay, well. I don't know what to say about this video because realistically you could say everything I've done is null and void because you know you can say in the last two tower bosses I was pulling Chicopee in and out when you know it was going to get hit by a pretty uh, powerful move um, you can say I did too much damage using the handgun but I don't know realistically Regardless of the pal you're using, if you're creating like an apex predator, like God here, I still think you're gonna be pulling your pal in and out because there is still such thing as, you know, super effective moves and you're still gonna be trying to damage the boss. You know, this, this wasn't, this wasn't meant to be a challenge run where I only use pals. This was only meant to be a video where I make Chicopee the apex predator that I know it can be. 
Now, were there other passives I could have chosen to make this better? Probably. You know, I could have gotten rid of Celestial Emperor and found something to work on the defense, um, because I, I feel like that's the that's the main issue with this build, is the fact that its defense is only 590. Um, I mean, its attack is insane. Like, this thing is... This is absolutely bonkers. No, no Chicopee was ever meant to have 996 attack. But, uh, I still think this was a successful experiment. Yeah. If you've made it this far, thank you oh so much, dear viewer. You know, I know I talked about this in my last video, but the, the support that you and everyone else has given me has just been sublime. I can't believe it, to be honest. For the first time in over 10 years of doing YouTube, I legitimately believe that I'll be able to gain some traction and maybe even become a quote-unquote big YouTuber. You know, it's uh, it's been a dream of mine for so long, and it's I'm I understand it's a dream for everyone, but this is this is my passion, and the fact that I've just gained so much support is just wonderful. So again, thank you. I will continue to do what I'm doing, and I will continue to make content that hopefully you can enjoy.